Jackbox, a party pack of games that got super popular during a certain event, with tons of content creators making content for it, which made the game very popular. Also, around those years, people decided to review those games and make tier lists. You can find a ton of videos online about it. So, I decided to put my own opinion on the interwebs, even if I am a year or two late. However, all the other videos focus on all the games. We don't need another review that says Quiplash is S tier and how Civic Doodle is F tier. We don't care about that. Instead, I decided to review games that are considered single player. But Lab, you may ask, what do you mean by that? And are you even qualified to review those? Well, that's a great condescending question. See, in Jackbox, each game has a thing called player requirement. It shows the minimum and maximum amount of players able to play the game. Most of the time, the player limit is 8. However, very few games have the requirement of one player, which are going to be the games I will review. And I'm technically able to review these because I made several videos over playing Jackbox by myself. It's a series. Since this is an opinionated video, I am legally required to say that this review is biased, and you may have a different opinion than me, but also, mine is objectively correct because I said so. Luckily for us, the first Jackbox Party Pack has only two single-player games, You Don't Know Jack and Lieswater. You Don't Know Jack 2015 is a trivia game that's all about different fun facts up to the year 2015. There are about 11 questions the whole game, and Jack Attack serves as the final question. Round 1 consists of random questions, it's a trivia game, so it's nothing too interesting. You Don't Know Jack has many gimmicks, for example, the questions aren't direct. It would ask the question in a confusing way. Like, for example, take this question about the Duck Dynasty characters on the set of Swan Lake. A normal version of the question would be to ask who's the swan in Swan Lake, not which character would the Duck Dynasty people hurt. But that weird roundabout way of asking is what makes the game entertaining. Instead of asking a normal question, ask something out of pocket that requires you to think for a bit. They even have specific questions that take this concept way too far. They have random events like wrong answer the game, who's the dummy, kangaroo, peanut, Albert Einstein, or Uranus, and more. Each of these questions are specific with their own twist. For example, wrong answer the game rewards you if you get the wrong answer, even more than if you get it right. Kangaroo, Peanut, Albert Einstein, or Uranus asks you a question that has the answer of Kangaroo, Peanut, Albert Einstein, or Uranus. In my opinion, this helps switch up the game a bit and keeps you on your toes for the next surprise. Around question 6 is where round 2 starts, where everything is doubled. It's the exact same as round 1, except now you can gain and lose more points. The third round is very different, though. It's Jack Attack, a fast-paced game where you have to match up the answers together. Like, for the theme of what your house is made out of and matching glass to people who shouldn't throw stones. Which, all of these seem like basic usual trivia party fun, but we do lose some mechanics since we are playing the single player. You Don't Know Jack has a specific mechanic called screwing, where you can force someone to answer the question in 5 seconds. However, because we are playing alone, you don't even get the option to screw someone over. Not even yourself. There is also Jack Attack, where usually it's more difficult with more players. It's supposed to be the fastest to buzz in the answer, but since it's only us, you don't really need to worry about buzzing in on time. This isn't going to be the last time we'll see some mechanics being lost due to the fact of playing a multiplayer game single player. The interesting gimmicks of the trivia game is what makes me not want to put it in a super low tier. However, that doesn't give it an automatic S. Because of the exclusion of the screw, as well as it's just a basic trivia game with nothing more in it, I'm putting it in C. It's just mediocre. Nothing too bad, but nothing too great or awesome or any other good adjective. Lyswater is the other game in the first party pack, where, surprise, it's another trivia game. You will see a theme here. This trivia game, however, is super simple. It's just answering true or false to the statements, which are comically placed onto flies you swat. That's where the title comes in. There's nothing too surprising or interesting to say about this one, except for the fact that this was the first game Jackbox had that could hold up to 100 players. And now Jackbox can have 10,000 players in the audience, so small stepping stones. Besides that, the game is super simple. Each statement is random that the player has to answer true or false to, except during the final round, listener, where all the Thomas. topics will be the same so theme. You are, this you game just special. suffers from being mind, boring, just... but that's the only real negative thing I have to say. I liked that if the statement was true, it would give you a little blurb about the fact. That was cute, but it's not doing anything crazy. So it's also joining You Don't Know Jack 2015 in C tier. Jackbox Party Pack 2 has only one single player game, Bomb Corp. Bomb Corp is a task game where you have to defuse a bomb, and if you fail to do so, everything will blow up. Out of all the Jackbox games here, this is the only one with a coherent story. I didn't complete it, but I did get halfway through the first week. The story in the game is that you work at Bomb Corp, a company who puts bombs in everything and needs you to defuse them. 
On your device, you will see a selection of wires as well as various hints that guide you towards the wires you need to cut. Cut the wrong one and boom! The more you play, the more complicated it gets, like when rules correct other rules by saying how rule number 3, which says to cut all evens, actually meant odds or the rules where it will describe the explosive wire as funky or gross. The other mini game is where you file names in a certain order, get one wrong and you start over. Apparently there's another mini game, but I didn't get to it. Call me a bad reviewer, but I don't care. Personally, I love the 8-bit charm the game has. It's just so retro. Jokes aside, I think the chiptune is also good for background music. The ticking clock in the background while you defuse the bombs is such a nice atmospheric touch, it keeps you wide alert and focused at the task. The game isn't that hard to comprehend, it's just figuring out the correct way to do things in order to not blow up. It throws curveballs, but that's what makes it fun, and I love it. Genuinely, if this was its own game, I would have so many hours on it, but I can't because I am busy with real life things. This is one of my favorite games in the whole series. It's such a good game with others and even single player. This is one of the few games I consider that work well with fewer players. Granted, those games usually, usually rely on all the players to help out each other, but that aside, it works well. This game even rewards you by yourself by making it way easier than multiplayer. More players mean you have to account for everyone else's rules. Single player, you just have to pay attention to yourself. It's intriguing, it's addicting, and I didn't even finish it. Apparently, the wiki states that there are 15 days, and I only did three. There's even an added grind mode where it goes on forever. My record is eight, by the way. If that doesn't convince you, what's crazy enough is that Jackbox even knows how good this game is. It was even updated this year in February with mostly fan requested patches. But remind you, this game came out in 2015, almost a decade ago. Now, compiling everything I said, it may be early for this, but Bomb Corp is an easy S tier for me. It has so much going for it and it's addicting. Who knows, maybe we'll get another lob playing Jackbox alone video with Bomb Corp. Jackbox Party Pack 3 keeps up with the trend and grants us with one game, Trivia Murder Party. Trivia Murder Party is another trivia game with its own unique take. This time, the game takes place at a murder trivia show where you have to answer questions to survive. If you get any wrong, you are sent to the Killing Floor, where you have to play a variety of mini games to survive. This is actually one of the few games I've played on this channel before. It has the You Don't Know Jack style of questions where it asks them in a strange and silly way or sometimes just normally. I mostly have to rely on guessing or even prior knowledge in order to barely get points, but who cares about trivia? Let's talk about the mini games. Every time you lose or get three questions in a row correctly, you are sent to the killing floor. For YouTube purposes, I'm not going to refer to that floor as the floor. The floor has a ton of mini games, ranging from picking your poison and chalices, cutting off your own finger, and making a very long word, which is the hardest mini game for me, to even more. The one complaint I have about the minigame is specifically fingers. This game requires you to lose a finger, which doesn't seem bad until you find out that eliminates that answer from the entire game. For example, if you remove your pinky finger, you can no longer pick number 4 as an answer. For single player, you have to get through 7 questions until you get to the final round, in which it's a race to see who can get to the end. But don't think you're alone. If the darkness catches up to you, you lose. You move forward by correctly answering what topics fit in that category. This is a game that greatly benefits from other players, mostly because you're guaranteed immunity as long as you get questions right and your friends don't. But even if you don't have friends, it's a challenge. This game is hard and the mini games are hard. That's part of the fun, but it sucks when you have to spin the loser wheel for the millionth time and just automatically lose because of chance. The challenge is fun and I do enjoy playing it more than anything else besides Bomb Corp right now, but it's going to be tier. There is a reason for this that I will explain later for a very specific game. Jackbox Party Pack 5 consists of two games, You Don't Know Jack Full Stream and Zeeple Dome. You Don't Know Jack Full Stream is just like You Don't Know Jack, it's basically the same game. I'm not even sure why I made it its own separate identity for this video, but it does have some small changes here and there, like the binge pipe inclusion and the pick your question question. Besides that, it's just your average You Don't Know Jack, which has the same opinions and complaints. It's C tier. Zeeple Dome is a game. Unlike the other games where you enter prompts or solve puzzles, the best way to describe it is that it's just like Angry Birds, but worse. It's a teamwork game, but we don't care about that if we're only playing with ourselves. You are a little god, and you are in a gauntlet where you just slingshot yourself towards your enemies. But sometimes it's special, where you can only hit an enemy if it's either white or your specific color, and it's still a way to defeat them. It's super finicky to control, which is by flicking your character around, by the way. And even the wiki suggests not using a computer for this, or even streaming it online. It's such a weird game, it doesn't even feel like a Jackbox game to me. It just feels like a weird shoehorn-in game. 
It's not fun. Even if Pass Me was like, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would, it still suffers from being boring. And what makes it worse is that it benefits from being single player. Multiple players bounce off of each other, and you can miss shots. And even then, it still sucks! It's such a weird game that I dislike. It suffers from being boring, too complicated and finicky, and it's just hard, but like, not in a fun way. More in a tedious way. F tier. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. On a lighter note, Jackbox Party Pack 6 has a way better game. Trivial Murder Party 2. This whole game is the reason why the previous entry is a B tier. This game expands upon the first one by having new minigames, new setting, and no finger minigame. The new location is a hotel where the lore reasons that it's the killer, redacted, yeah, that's the killer's name, it's their childhood and a home. This version includes way more interesting details, such as like the score room being an elevator, improved graphics, changed doll designs, which is cool. Another thing that's interesting is the minigames. We have some recurring ones, but there's also gifts, which allows you to answer a secret question at the very end of the game. They also added more stuff to make it easier and harder. For one thing, if everyone dies before the final round, you're allowed one redo. Of course I spent it on the next turn losing, but who cares. The other thing they change is that to escape, instead of just needing one answer, correct, you need all three because there's a magic barrier around it for some reason. I feel like these are great improvements to the game, it flushes out them more, it allows for more chaotic fun, and also I like the new doll designs. This game is the only reason why the first one is in B tier. Well, that's a lie, but this game gets its place at A tier. A good game if I do say so myself. Jackbox Party Pack 9, the newest release at the time of this recording, has Quicksort, our final single player game. I know we ended the last one on a high note, but I do not like Quicksort. Sorry. Quicksort Forever. See, with Quicksort, it has to be played multiplayer, but Quicksort Forever is a continuous game to see how far you get to. So, a game that has two different game modes. My highest round is 4, by the way, so you can kinda understand how much I hate it. This game suffers from being boring, in my opinion, but also it's just mildly infuriating. You have to categorize categories in a prompt in the correct order, whether that be in order of a menu, years, mostly years, and other stuff. If you get something wrong, next round it crystallizes and causes an obstacle on your limited board. Think of Tetris, but way worse. There is a way to get rid of them, but I don't understand nor would I like to figure it out. As much as I want to put it in F tier, I get reminded that it's not Zeepledome. So that's why I put it in D tier. So that's my tier list over Jackbox games that are technically classified as single player, thanks to the player requirement. I've been thinking about this video for a while, and this is my first scripted video. It's also not just a normal video where it's just gameplay funny moments. I know it's not the typical thing for the channel, and it's not gonna get a bajillion views, because who would want to listen to me ramble this long about a super boring subject? But I'm somewhat passionate about it, because I played the first Jackbox when it came out as a kid. Yeah, I'm that old. I lied, I'm not. I like Jackbox, and with the newest release coming out soon, we may get another single player game, which I won't talk about. Unless you guys want a sequel, or I don't know, a 5 second YouTube short that's in 144p. How's that for a compromise? 